sculpted on my practice finger and this one has an extreme nail shape that's green and then some bigger different glitter shapes in the background to give it some movement. But then there are three flowers, three types of flowers. I have magnolia flowers, daisies, and roses that I decorated the top of the nail with. But then underneath the nail, so if you turn it so you're looking at it from a profile view, there's a branch that comes down with a little birdie on it and then more of the magnolia flowers. This nail is just so, so beautiful. I love it so much. That little birdie is just so cute. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So we're going to start and we're just going to layer two forms together. So cut off the extension part of one form, stick that to the end of the extension part of another form. And then there you go, you've got a double length nail form. So trim off or trim the back of the form to make it easier to apply to your practice finger or real finger if that may be the case. And then fit the form. After that form is fit, we're going to blend the transition from free edge to form with clear acrylic. And that's the first step. No matter what I'm doing with any kind of a color or product, the first thing I do is just create a smooth blend. And after that, you can create this clear base for under the enhancement. And this is where you're really finding your extreme shape. Now, Obviously, when you're making any kind of an extreme shaped nail, you really want to monitor and try to get it sculpted from side to side symmetrically. And if your nail forms are clear, which I have seen a few that are a clear plastic material, so you can see right through the form, that's fantastic. And you can use that to monitor and look like actually through the enhancement to see if it's symmetrical. Normally, that's not the case. And any nail forms I've used that are clear, I find are really uh, kind of wiggly and flimsy. So if that's not the case, which typically it wouldn't be, one thing I like to do is I like to look at little, there's always those little guide marks on your forms. Keep track of those and measure where everything is and just keep, keep a mental note of it so that as you're sculpting it, you can make sure that you're doing things symmetrically from side to side. And then after your clear base is on there, then you're going to want to fill in the rest of this enhancement just with a thin layer of green acrylic. And the green that I'm using is this absolutely major stunner of a shimmery green. And I'll put color names in the description box below, but this green is like my absolute favorite color ever. And I don't, I'm a green person. So if you're not a green person, you may not agree with me, but for me personally, I love green. So this fully green nail was right up my alley. So I'm apply that green base over the entire thing, not worrying about structure at all at this point, just the color. Then we're going to press a variety of iridescent glitter and mylar flakes into the background. And most likely the green acrylic has already set at this point and so they're not going to stick. So what I like to do is just brush a little bit of clear acrylic down and then that will definitely make them stick. Otherwise your other choice and one of my favorites is to use some jewelry gel for glitter placement. That's like the golden standard, but it is getting out a whole different type of product to use and encapsulating it. and. So if you want to just stick with acrylic, clear acrylic is a very suitable glue. So I have those chunky shaped glitters down the middle, and then I have some mylar flakes that I'm going to apply above that and below that. And really above it, it's not necessary to do any extra glitter stuff if you don't want to, because eventually it will be covered up with some beautiful flowers. So if you want to skip that step, that would be fine. But I just wanted to have some continuity and a glittery masterpiece over the top of the entire nail. So I decided why not? But after we have all of that glitter done, then you're going to want to encapsulate the nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure that all of those glitters are going to stay exactly where you put them and they're not going to file off or, you know, get messed up. And this stage here is where you do want to build in your nail structure. So make sure you have an apex built in, whether it's hidden or on top of the nail and you have that beautiful arc, whatever is up to you. And um, if you want me to go into an apex versus a hidden apex more detailed in a specific video, I can definitely do that. Typically a hidden apex is only used in competition or extreme type nails like this and not something that would be worn on a daily basis. So if, depending on your uh, application, you may not really need to know too much about hidden apexes, but otherwise we're going to be filing this nail into shape with our e-file. I would highly recommend breaking out an e-file if you have one to use because there is just so much filing on an extreme nail like this to make it look as crisp and clean as possible that while doing some finished filing with a hand file is always my favorite method, the first basis file is great with an e-file. We're going to, after that, after it's all filed and beautiful, we're going to be tracing the angle of the free edge on a piece of paper and then laying a nail form backing over that little template that you made. So when you're tracing it, use a really bold marker or pen like I did I use a felt tip pen and so you have that really intense line because once you place your nail form backing paper on top of your little doodle it's going to kind of make the little drawing a lot more subtle so if you don't have a very vivid or bold 
uh, difference between your drawing and in the background of the paper. So it's not as, like I said, vivid and intense. You're not going to see it through the nail form backing. So you want something that's easy to see at a glance. You can even see it through the paper with my camera, which is saying something because usually my camera kind of dulls the look of my little templates. So what we're doing here is we're sculpting our tree branch. So when you're sculpting your tree branch, you're going to want to have a little angle that comes down and then you're going to have a little another branch that comes off of that. Once that's all done, you can glue your branch under the nail so that it comes down and it sticks out down below and then secure it underneath with some acrylic. I use the same brown color that I use for the branch to just really attach it underneath. And then I also went through with that brown color and I rounded out my branch slightly. So when you round out your branch, you're going to add more acrylic to both sides of it so that it has more of a 360 effect because as soon as it comes off the nail form backing, the side that was down is super, super flat. It's shiny and flat and looks different from the other side. And since this nail will be viewed from all angles and this element of the nail will be viewed from all angles, you want it to look the same no matter which direction it's being viewed. After that we're going to be sculpting a little base of our birdie that is going to be sitting on our branch with blue acrylic. Make sure that your bird is not bigger than the space that it allows just because it's a very small space that you can place this bird and it's really easy at least for me to accidentally sculpt something too big especially when I have a tight space. And so I just like to really monitor how much space I have for this type of thing so that I don't accidentally have to scrap what I've been working on and start over. After that base for the bird is done, also sculpt a few tail feathers so that they can have some 3D tail feathers coming off of our bird. I'm going to add a little bit more blue acrylic to my ba my bird base because it was so thin that it would be very fragile and I didn't want it to break as I was working on gluing it on so I figured might as well add another layer to it now as I would have to do it at some point anyway. So after that layer is done then I'm going to glue my little bird to the branch and just find wherever you think it looks the best to have him sitting and then after that little birdie is glued down you're going to want to really thicken it up and give it so much more detail with some blue acrylic. So when I say give it more detail I mean things like wings and in just the general shape you don't have to worry about adding details like um, the beak with the blue you can do that with white or different colors or even the eyes I just painted the eyes on onto my bird it is so tiny I think it's hard to really grasp how small that this is just from looking at it because the nail itself is so big that I think it just messes with perspectives when you're thinking of how of what size this is so this bird is really very tiny so when you're sculpting it you have to just kind of keep in mind that everything is is so small and when you're looking at it and same thing just like when I was saying with the branch you're sculpting something so tiny look at it and you're sculpting something so tiny and you have the perspective of 360 degrees so turn the nail look at it from all angles it's a little awkward when you're filming it because you get some really strange uh strange views but just really make sure that when you're looking at it you do see it from every single side and then if you want to, you can mix in some other colors. Your bird does not need to just be solid blue. I added a little bit of a burgundy color to the belly of my bird and you can do whatever you like. I mean, this is, um, the bird I was going for was just kind of one I made up. It wasn't a specific breed that I was going for, but if you want to, you certainly can. If you have, uh, you know, a bird that you certainly like to watch. I know one for me that me and Melody watch all the time. Melody's my daughter. If you didn't know, we watch Robins in our backyard all the time. And every year there's a Robin's nest that's right outside our front door and we get to peek at the little babies. And so for me, a Robin would be probably the bird of choice, except in this particular design, a Robin, even the males that have the super bright red belly just aren't quite as colorful. And I just wanted the idea of a blue bird. I've got the iridescent glitters in the surface of the nail that have kind of a blue undertone to them. So I figured a blue bird would just really bring the whole design together. So that was where my color choice came in but then we're going to be adding the little birdie beak with white and the feet. So even though a bird's feet are not typically white, if you start them with white and then do some outlines, the white will come off as highlights and it'll give your bird feet a lot more depth and dimension instead of starting them with say gray. Again, especially since this is such a small application, you need to have high contrasting things for smaller details like the feet so that they actually show up. So now for our flowers, I'm going to start with the magnolia ones and we, and I sculpted, Ooh, I don't know. A dozen magnolia flowers maybe but we're going to be sculpting them with a pink and white mixed bead so what you're going to do is first dip your bead of a dip your brush in to pick up a very small bead of white acrylic and then double dip that bead into a pink color and then around a silicone uh, 
silicone tool that's a cone shaped silicone tool you're going to start placing those flower petals so do three of them in a little circle and then after those three are done those are going to cup this uh, the cone shaped silicone tool then you're going to do another set of three those ones are going to flare out at the tip so they're going to be snug to the silicone tool at the bottom and then they're going to fan out so that's layers one and two and then depending, I did some of my flowers with just two layers like that to keep them a little bit smaller. And then I did some that were bigger. So then the next ones that you're going to do are going to be the third row of petals for a total of nine. And then so place or sculpt another set of three. And then as you're doing those, those are barely attached at the bottom. So they're not, they're not cupped to the bottom of the flower hardly at all, just a little bit. And then they open up. So there's your magnolia flowers, sculpt multiples of those. Then for the roses, I'm going to begin with a middle section of a pink and burgundy, burgundy mixed bead of acrylic and sculpt that into a long, slightly arced uh, oval shape. Pat that out so it's very, very thin. And then after it really starts to turn matte, turning matte is so crucial when sculpting flower petals. That's like the moment everything happens. Then you're going to roll up your little center of your flower trying to keep it pinched at the bottom and flared at the top. Easier said than done. The more practice you have with roses, the easier that gets. So you want it to have, like I said, pinched on one side and then opened on the other, but then you're going to sculpt some more little petals. And for me, usually my little middle bit of my rose will just stand up on end, but if it seems to be wanting to tip over, then I just attach it to my nail form backing with a tiny bit of the same color acrylic that I've been using. But then we're going to sculpt the little petals in sets of three. So everything with these flowers is in sets of three, except for the daisy when we get to that point. But for our roses and the magnolia flowers, sets of three is kind of the rule of thumb. So you're going to do, you've got the little middle of your flower for the mat or for the rose, and then everything is in those three. So I just sculpt them in threes and I place them in threes. So we've got the three for the next layer. Keep these very, very small. The rose petal should be considerably tiny compared to the petals for your magnolia flowers. So as you're working on your little roses, I believe I sculpted two of these. You're going to pick them up when the petals turn matte. Like I said, turning matte is also kind of like the rule that you have to keep in mind when sculpting flowers and just keep adding layers of petals. So there isn't really a number that you have to go for. Like I, for my magnolias, I did six and nine petaled flowers. For these ones, you just have to keep going until you're satisfied. Once you're happy with the fullness of the rose, stop. If that's two layers of petals, that's great. If it's six, then that's fine too. And so after you're happy with your roses, then you can move on to your daisies. For the daisies, sculpt several long white petals. And don't really count, just make a whole pile of them. And if you're like me, then at the very end, you ended up sculpting a few more just to fill in spots because that's kind of how it works. But just sculpt a whole bunch of them. If you want to kind of count, I'd say 12 is a decent number, 12 to 16. 16 is probably a safer bet for a number of petals for these. And they're just long white bars. And I know it's really hard to see them on my nail form backing because we're sculpting with white on top of white and that's not the most visually appealing piece of videography, but it is what we need to do. So just sculpt those long white petals. And I tried to make enough from the beginning with uh, for both of my daisies because I did two daisies and two roses. And so when you're doing these, just like I said, make a whole bunch of them. These little petals go really quickly, so you don't have to worry about it taking taking too long. It's just a, you know, long bar shapes. I still sculpt these in threes because that's just kind of my, my mode of working at that point. But then after that, we're going to sculpt a little yellow circle of of acrylic for the base of our daisy and then place some little little drip of some nail glue on your nail form backing and then dip your petals in and place them and start placing them in like the four the four sides of your petal north south east west so that you have a base and that they're evenly evenly placed from the beginning and then fill them in from there so after you have those that's four the next row is going to be eight and eight looks pretty good depending on you know how full you want your daisy to be but just keep placing all of these all of these little petals and the great thing is because that acrylic was still kind of wet when i started placing these petals it grabs on to that nail glue so fast and it sets up and these petals are glued almost instantly and so that works out actually really well. And then after you're happy with the placement of all of your little daisy petals, add a little bit more of that yellow acrylic to the center of the daisy, and then dip a dotting tool into some, or a toothpick into some uh, clear acrylic powder and use that to add some texture to the center of the daisy by just poking it repeatedly. Now we're going to be gluing our magnolia flowers to the end of the branch. Save a few for the top of the flower or for the top of the nail to add to your flower bouquet, but start out with just gluing them onto the tips of the two branches that are on that underside twig of the nail. And when you're gluing these down, 
try to kind of keep in mind spacing and try to keep them looking nice and even and mix do a mix of bigger flowers and smaller flowers but really the great thing with doing anything floral is that flowers and nature aren't perfect there's no perfection needed here if it looks you know if you to your eye it looks a little uneven it's going to look more realistic and that's perfectly fine so you know, just kind of be easy on yourself, I guess is what I'm saying here. And when you're making the flowers, I had one magnolia flower that I actually disliked when I first made it because I thought it looked a little bit, I don't know, wonky, just not my, not my favorite, but I used it because I reminded myself that that's really how flowers are. They're not all perfect, pristine, picturesque flowers, and they don't have to be. You can use the ones that are a little bit cockeyed and that's fine. After you have all your flowers glued underneath, then I'm going to go through and add my little flower arrangement to the top of the nail and just kind of glue them in place, alternating the flowers that I'm choosing so that I have a variety across the nail. My daisies are significantly more prominent to the top of the nail just because they are a little bit bigger than some of the rest, but that is, you know, that fine. That's fine. It works out. I love just the whole kind of crazy mix of flowers. It's a little chaotic looking, but that's kind of what you're going for when you're making a bouquet. But then we're going to add a little transition between the flowers to the branch on the branch underneath the nail with a little bit more of the green color at the base of each flower. After that's done, I'm going to be adding details to my bird and the flowers with acrylic paint. And all of those details are fairly subtle and fairly simple. You don't have to overdo it. If your flowers look realistic as they are, you don't have to take too much time in adding more to them if you don't want to. Now, if you want to and you want to add little veining on each rose petal, go for it. I'd love to see them because I'm sure they would be absolutely gorgeous showstoppers by the end of it. But if you don't want to, you don't have to, especially since your acrylic brush will imprint a little bit of a texture to the petals. So if they don't have that extra painted detail, they still have some to them. They're not, you know, completely smooth. They have some texture and they have some realism. So you don't have to you know, overdo it with the extra details. On my birdie, what I did for details is I gave him eyes, I did highlight his feathers, and I did detail his feet slightly. But then for the flowers, basically what I did is I added a little bit of a highlight on my magnolia flowers, just with white paint on the very, very edges of the petals, and not even all of them, just the ones I felt like needed to stand out a little bit more. And I did the same thing on my daisies with just a little bit of white on each petal, just to bring them out slightly, but don't, you know, it's not necessary. You could even skip this step. So, you know, whatever floats your boat, add a little bit if you want to or, or not, whatever, you know, whatever works. The one thing I would recommend is if your yellow isn't very bright to add just a little bit of a brighter shade of yellow to the center of the daisies. That is one thing that I did do. And I thought it brought them, it made them just so much more uh, bright and, and summery looking. And then we're going to add some jewelry gel between and around the flowers. And this has two purposes. One, it's going to help keep the flowers very well secured to the nail, which adds some strength. And the other thing is then we can add some crystals or rhinestones to our little design to fill in between the flowers if there are any gaps. So after you have that jewelry gel placed, cover it with a thin layer of gel sealer or gel top coat, and then you can go through and place your crystals. And they will still be attached even through the gel top coat they will still kind of grip into that jewelry gel and then you don't have to worry about a tacky layer which is one of my least favorite things is having kind of a stickiness around your crystals that you have to try to either cleanse or top coat later but if you just apply the jewelry gel then the top coat then you have no stickiness and it's just done when you're done you're all done and it's cured it's there's no extra steps afterwards which makes things a little quicker and a little bit cleaner looking too so just fill in with these crystals wherever you feel like there needs to be, you know, some added space filler, you could say. But if there's really no rhyme or reason to it, I use colors that were complementary to the design, some whites and some pinks, pretty much. But then once all that's done, brush a very light layer of matte top coat over the flowers. You don't want to flood your details. You want to keep it all just very, very light layer. It's just to protect the acrylic paint. So you don't have to go overboard, especially if you didn't do much painting and over your birdie too. And then once all that's done, this nail is complete. You guys, I am so in love with this nail. I don't typically sculpt flowers. They're just not in my wheelhouse. I'd rather sculpt, I don't know, knives at Halloween time is <laughs> probably more like my style. But every once in a while, I like to kind of go outside my comfort zone and I'm so proud of this one. Everything is just spring and bright and summery and just kind of gives you some renewed hope. Or at least it gives me some renewed hope. Spring always has that effect on me. So I hope you guys love this one as much as I do. And if you do decide to do a recreation, I would absolutely love to see it on my Facebook or Instagram accounts. It would just really brighten my day and I will see you guys next time. Bye.